Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Today's video is going to be bits and pieces. I've got to water my normal pot, so that's not the cool shady lot and not the holy clay pots. <clears throat> and not the mounts, obviously. Um, it's everything else, which is a hell of a mix, really. Uh, majority are Oncidium types or intergenerics, but there's some oddities. And I'm just going to pick on a few as I'm watering them. I've got a clear bit of table up here, so as, I've, as I'm watering, if I want to film one, I can put it to one side. And we'll have a look and a chat about each one. Um, I don't want to set the tripod up, it slows me down too much and obviously with the number of pots I've got to do I need to get on with it. But life's made easy today, it's a flush. <laughs> so it's just, just plain water, it's easy to do, no mixing and all that sort of stuff, so we'll get on with it then. Okay, first one I want to look at then is this, um, this is an Alisara, um, or Alisara actually, I don't think you sound the E. That's part of the Alice bit. <laughs> uh, say it how you like. It is supposed to be Latin after all. But it's a made up into generic name. And this is Tahitian Dancer. I've had to put my um, dish up here. This is the one I use for um, mixing my media in the kitchen. Um, because some of the larger pots are too big to have a drip tray. And as you can see, water is pouring out the bottom of that. And I don't want that all over the plants that it sits above. Um, this one did well last year, um, had a good blooming on it and was repotted as the new growths with new roots came out and new growths were this one, this one, this one and this one and all of them have pushed up a spike and have we got any, yes this, this one round here has pushed up two spikes, this one has just got one. Oh no, that one's got two as well. This one, that one has only got one. And the one round the far side, which is a smaller pseudo bulb, that's only got one as well. So out of four new growths, um, an average of one and a half spikes per new growth. Two with two, two with one. Nonetheless, we've got six spikes that should bloom at roughly the same time. Although I do notice this one's a bit behind the others. But although it's a bit behind the others, it's got more buds on. One, two, three, four, five, probably six. Whereas this one is one, two, three, four, probably only five. So and it looks like an average of five or six blooms per spike. Although this one may be a bit uh, lagging behind. One, two, three, four, possibly only four or five. Anyway, this is to come. <clears throat> shouldn't be too long now, the buds are starting to swell, so we should have that in bloom in the not too distant future. Grows well for me this one, it was potted at, quite honestly, bang on the right time, because those roots absolutely rocketed. Um, I can probably lift that out, although it's heavy now because it's just been watered and I don't want to lift the plant out of the... No, it's not going to come out easily, we'll leave it in there, but it's got a very good root system, pushed on nicely. Good colour to the leaves, looks nice. And that's a scale. A dead one. <laughs> they come off easy, they're dead. And when you get an odd one like that, it's it's just one that's escaped from somewhere, taken a bite out of the plant and got the old uh, systemic, so it didn't last long. So anyway, good plant, pushing on well, very pleased. Um, reasonable size blooms quite a lot bigger than Soto Annum, but not like the big blousy Oncidium intergenerics, but nonetheless attractive and very fragrant. This is my poor little Nelly Isla that got some severe slug damage on that um, pseudo bulb, um, and that was wet damage as well. That had to be dried off with cinnamon. Um, it did manage a new growth, which tried to bloom, and I stopped it. And now it's pushed up this new growth, which is a little smaller, and this one tried to bloom on both sides. I took this one off and I'm going to let this one bloom simply because I just haven't seen the blooms for a long time. And this is the variety Red Velvet. So it's very attractive blooms, good lemony fragrance. And um, the spike's pushing on. I'm not going to let it bloom for long though. Uh, I don't want the, the strength to be sapped. I mean this had a lousy root system and um, I presume the root system's got a bit better over time. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we've got a reasonable root system in there now. That's not bad at all. Quite pleased with that. So once the blooms are over, I'll let, let them open 
and we'll have a look and then, then I'm going to take the spike off early and then try and get yet another new growth with some more roots and we'll see how we do but almost lost but seems to be growing okay now leaves are a trifle pale but um, <laughs> there'll be quite a few of those around as uh, on the grounds that um, I did get told off for giving my Oncidium types too much light <laughs> uh, it won't happen next year and now that we're in the winter time it's highly unlikely to happen I'm lucky to get any light anyway that's that one well, this is my um, Dendrobium nobly type prima donna um, this got set back earlier in the year quite badly and as a consequence it's pushed up some nice new growths but they didn't reach their full potential they started late simple as that started late um, and we do get a shorter growing season in the UK but nonetheless I have new growths now what this one's going to do is that'll be a waste of time that new growth that only started a short while ago and it's finished growing it's not going to do anything but it's got a couple of leaves on and then we've got an older new growth I know that sounds daft but it's a new growth that hasn't bloomed albeit a bit short and then to go with it if it will stand up I'm going to have trouble with this so I can see it coming you're just not going to stay up are you? I'll have to hold it um, this new growth with my thumb is an old new growth again that looks like it's bloomed on one nubbin which means it will bloom on the rest so we'll get good blooms on this cane and then we've got the other two here which are this year's canes didn't reach their full size by any means but they're reasonable canes and they've both finished growing now so there's no growth going on on this at all so this will probably be the last time it gets watered for a while now um, and it was just a flush so no feed I am obeying the rules <laughs> reducing the feed down it probably won't get any more feed there's not a lot of point it's not growing yeah but nonetheless I don't want these canes to desiccate produced a good root system so I'm happy with that and um, that is in the smallest pot I could cram it in it will need to go in a bigger one next year if only to stop it flipping falling over um, but at the moment we will get blooms on that right hand cane that one buried in there and both of these two and we might get an odd bloom in a couple of places on the really old canes that haven't bloomed before you know nodes that haven't bloomed before but we will get some blooms it just won't be the mass showing it was you know <laughs> last year well actually beginning of this year come to think of it getting my years muddled up here yeah we're still in this year aren't we <laughs> the blooms will be next year the ones we had were at the beginning of this year so that's that one um, it's grown okay but nowhere near what it should have done next year I'm expecting more from you I'll get you back up to that large specimen size that we once had um, during the winter the chances are the rest of those leaves will drop those are the oldest leaves those are quite old leaves as well these leaves will stay they'll go on in through next year as well so we'll see how we go now this nobly <coughs> is behaving properly and I'm surprised because when I got this it was on our coach trip to Burnham so that would have been May and it was in full bloom on those two big fat canes at the back so I'm surprised this has behaved reasonably well because obviously that was from a mass producer at the time but it has pushed on its two new canes now they're not as fat as the previous ones one of them's a bit taller one of them's a bit shorter but as a nobly, this one is still growing. Now these two latest leaves that haven't unfurled yet, may be its last. Difficult to tell because they haven't even opened yet. So this may be coming to a stop, but it's not there yet. Now this would have been a good time to feed that, but it's a flush run today. I don't mix stuff up. Well, I might have to start doing that as we get into winter because I'll have some that will need a dribble of water now and again and some that are still growing that could do with a bit of food as well. So we might have to do two lots, but only for a relatively short period of time. So that's that one. Um, the two new canes pushed on reasonably well, given the short season they had. They haven't done bad. Um, this has all the hallmarks of getting bigger, 
Yeah, next year, hopefully the new growth will start at the very beginning of the season and they'll have longer to grow. Oh dear, <laughs> this could turn into a monster. <laughs> but we'll get blooms on this, on the two canes there. Possibly an odd bloom on the two older ones if there's any gaps that haven't been used yet. So we'll get some blooms on that. Coming soon, well not coming soon, next year. Now this has been a miserable failure since I got it. <laughs> when I got it, it wasn't a bad plant. Um, with pseudo bulbs of ginormous status and a beautiful spike on it. These are gorgeous blooms and that's the only reason it's still here. If it wasn't for the blooms it produced it would have gone out ages ago. It's got a strange name this one. It's a Banfield Ara and it's Gilded Tower Mystic Maze. Many people have got this because it, it flooded the market for a while and then it had another little flood when a few more came out. This has never grown well for me but what we've got now is a new growth coming out here now that looks good and strong enough to get up to a blooming size bulb and so does this one and surprise surprise round the back out of the oldest part of the plant it's trying again so I've now got three new growths whereas I've only ever had one and I can relatively safely say why tiny little pot and in that tiny little pot a mass of roots and it's still producing new ones it does work struggled with this for ages repotted it with some new roots growing yeah into the smallest pot I could get it in because it you know it's capable of getting pretty big this and if this grows up to that size which I doubt if it will it's more likely to be about that size that's going to be right up to the edge of the pot that's going to be over the edge of the pot and that wasn't expected so, <laughs> so I don't know what that little one's going to do the, you know it would have been potted towards the back of the pot to leave room for where the, what was probably a single new growth when I repotted it anyway it's growing at long last I really am looking forward to that blooming and somewhere out of this lot we will get a spike we may get two but they'll be staggered this grows a bit farther on but you know didn't change much didn't change light didn't change temperatures didn't change media type but what I did do was repot it into fresh media at a good time in a small pot Seems to work. And look who's come to say hello. Oh, what's he got? You've been snoozing. Hey, you've been snoozing. Naughty cat. What you doing then? Hey, what you doing then? Hey, don't you get in the way, I'm busy. Yes, one foot's about as much as you're going to do, isn't it? <laughs> it doesn't normally come out here. Yeah good pussycat. Right, monster time. Um, this is my chrysotoxin and um, boy is this a monster. Um, and look what I've just noticed down in there. I have to deal with that. I wonder if that's uh, just on that one growth. Yeah, we've got a few bugs on this one. Flipping nuisance. Um, this is a monster. Um, it's pushed out one hell of a root system this year so I'm real pleased with that. Now this can bloom on what were this season's growth will bloom next year last season's growth will also bloom so given the number of canes I've got on here and their age we should get a lot of blooms um, <clears throat> basically it blooms from the top of the canes out of the apex and out of the leaf joints farther down as well so like on a new cane like this we'll probably get now we can see where the nubbins are, there's one there, there'll be another one round the other side there, down as low as this. So it's possible that on a new season's growth, after the winter, it could get three, sometimes four spikes. And on older canes that have already bloomed, you can see that one's already had two spikes on it, but it's still got nubbins where it may bloom again. So we could get quite a good show, like on a cane like this one over here, that's only had one bloom. That'll probably push out another two next year. So we should get a fair old bit on this lot next year. Got one cane started, well two canes actually, started late down here. These are shorter 
they look like they may well have finished growing as well so those might end up a bit shorter but certainly uh, this one's up to full size and um, this is a large version of chrysotoxin many that you see are like only two-thirds the size of this thing um, it was large when I got it the new growths have pushed up in the main a similar size so I think this is how big it's going to be and um, this is one of the few plants that when I repotted it I actually gave it quite a large pot um, didn't matter in this case <laughs> it was chucking roots out like they were going out of fashion and it's filled the pot and if I hadn't put it in a pot like that this thing would never stand up so done its job I'm expecting good things from this next year if you look at the really old canes round here you can sort of see like this cane here has had four spikes on it that was probably a, it could have been all in one year but it could have been over a period of two years two one year and two the following year but um, these older canes round here um, will eventually drop their leaves um, and then they can become old enough to actually take off the plant and they're getting replaced by new growths. I always think along the lines of if you're going to start taking canes off of um, these types of dendrobiums always make sure that the number of new ones is greater than what you're taking off. So you know if you've only had two new growths don't take off four old canes take off one perhaps or none whereas if you've had three or four new growths you can afford to take a couple off and make sure that they are the very oldest ones preferably that have lost their leaves and started to shrivel a bit because that's the point at which they become um, they're not any use to the plant anymore um, these canes around here although they're very old they're still of use to the plant because they're still plump and they still have leaves so I wouldn't dream of taking off those but sometime next year we might take a few canes off but in the meantime we'll look forward to the blooms I can't remember what time of year it is but um, it'll be late winter early spring or into spring I suspect we shall see well, this little bulbophyllum never gets looked at but it grows quite well for me and it has bloomed um, I think it had three maybe four spikes and it was <coughs> excuse me when it bloomed you actually realized that it's highly unlikely to be to be what it says on the tag which is tinga burinum tinga burinum don't think there's another eye in there that's my own writing as well that has faded a bit but yeah it's a, a little bit of a rambler but as bulbophyllums go the rhizomes are quite short but it's from its previous set of growths um, it's now pushing on um, so this growth round here has a new growth coming up here this one has a new growth this one has two one each side and this one here has quite a large new growth coming out with the new growths come new roots and um, these are quite long roots I don't know whether they show in the pot yes yeah, so you can see they do actually head down a reasonable amount so they're not a really short shallow rooted type which means even though those new growths are a little bit far from the pot some of the roots will get down in the media so I don't need to worry about it climbing out of the pot yet but the next set of new growths will <laughs> I can just about get away with this set even though every single one of them is up against the edge of the pot so something will have to be done with this, with this after these new growths have matured and the next lot start which is probably a year away so I won't be worrying about it yet I don't know when it was last repotted but the media is not old so it will probably be okay for another season um, but yes it's pushing on nicely this is a relatively new plant I seem to be collecting Miltonias lately and a lot of it is because people give them to me <laughs> oh you grow those don't you you have it uh, anyway that's how this one arrived and lovely strong new growth coming up there um, with associated new roots pushing out and it looks like it's starting another new growth on the other side of that bulb so that would be good if there's two um, this is um, this is a strange one because it's um, oh, Candida crossed with Binotii and Binotii I believe is a natural hybrid well if that's a natural hybrid 
i.e. two species, and it's crossed back with the species, it's nearly a primary hybrid, but not quite. Because <laughs> there's three species in there. Unless, if Binotii is, has got um, Candida in it, then there's only two species in there, so perhaps it could be classed as a primary cross, but it's not quite. But um, nonetheless, um, we will see what it looks like when it blooms, if and when it blooms. I'd suspect it will try and bloom on this new growth, and um, it depends what that little growth actually does. I mean, that might just stall and not grow. But it's got some roots, so uh, it's in a black pot, that's how it came. It hasn't been repotted on the grounds, this is new bark. It doesn't need to be, it'll be fine even though I can't see the roots, I know they're there because I can see them whizzing down from the top of the plant. So, so that's that little one. Now this is one of my twinkle types that decided to stall when it was repotted instead of growing. I mean it's not failing by any means, as it is pushing up quite a few new growths now, but I don't think they're going to get to full size. Um, it's got a proper name and um, basically uh, Siku Marguerite I believe is a twinkle cross back with Soto Annum pretty sure and that's got a clonal name as well so obviously it was a uh, out of the load of seedlings that were produced that one was a bit special and got a proper name or another name could he could just be a trade name we never find out but anyway it's it's putting up a silly little spike at the moment um, but apart from that there are new growths and it is producing some roots but it just stalled it happens you know sometimes we never know why I mean, knowing me, I probably repotted it as new growths were coming, and certainly on the other twinkles I've got, the, the new roots are, you know, in hot pursuit of the new growths, maybe part way down the growth, but, you know. So anyway, it's, um, it will recover, it will grow on again, but um, just a bit slow at the moment. Can't win them all. Now, this is a good pair. They just happen to be together at this point in time to compare colour, yeah? Now this one, I doubt if this has been kept in bright light, or the sort of light that I had during this past growing season. So this is a nice, good green colour. And let's have a look at this one that would have been subjected to what has been deemed too much light. Yeah? So which leaves would have caught the most light? And it's going to be the largest one sticking up, isn't it? But now look at the colour of... Uh, some of the newer ones. They're starting to get a bit of depth to their green again. So, <coughs> we know what to do next season, don't we? Put them somewhere different. <laughs> um, you need the light to get them to bloom, but you can push it too far. And it's a gradual process. You know, certainly in my grow space, it would have been over the whole season, and they gradually would have been subjected to too much light over a quite a long period. So they would have got pale over a period of time, not overnight. Um, so it's often difficult to spot these things. It, it needs a stranger, basically, to come in and take a cold look, <laughs> which is what happened. Um, but yeah, you can see the difference. This is a more normal colour. This is too pale. So we'll work on that next growing season. There's no point in doing it now because I haven't got the light. <laughs> so we'll see what happens next time. This one never gets looked at because I don't really like it. <laughs> but I'm putting up with it on a recommendation. This is um, a Dendrochillum cobianum. And I don't like the Dendrochillum blooms. On, I, I call them rat's tails because that's what they look like. Hundreds and hundreds of microscopic blooms on a lot of them. But this particular one, the blooms are a little larger. You know, almost visible to the naked eye. <laughs> but it's grown this new growth and now it's probably doing another one. I haven't got a clue where the spikes come out. Probably from the centre of the leaf. But um, it's growing and I'm putting up with it. But... It's probably not got a long-term future with me. Its saving grace will be, one, you need to bloom, and two, your fragrance needs to be pretty special and last a while. Otherwise, you're going to be for somebody else. Now, this is one of my little Cilogenes. And again, this never gets looked at. It has bloomed for me. It is fragrant, and the, the blooms are attractive. They're... You know, compared with the Moriana, they're tiny in comparison, but they're still reasonable size. And um, 
what this is up to is we've got a new growth coming out here. Is that one that bloomed? Yes. So this growth bloomed and it's now pushing up a new growth. Um, obviously the spikes come out of the centre of the leaf at the top and eventually fall off with a bit of help. And this one round here also has a new growth starting. Um, this used to be called Orcratia. Um, it's been renamed as Nitida or Nitida, however you want to say it. And um, I'm happy with the new name on this one. Uh, why it was changed, I don't know, but um, uh, it's sort of okay. It's not growing rampantly. Um, I have seen some absolute giants of this plant, you know, two foot across in a basket, all with the bulbs growing on top of each other. I'm a bit of a way from that sort of size. But we've got two new growths coming, and in theory, they should bloom. But it's going to be a long way off, um, so patiently waiting. But um, yeah, it, it sort of progressing. It was a tiny little plant when I got it, so I'm, you know, I'm growing it on. But I got it to blooming size just, and hopefully it'll do it again. Now these four are all down on the sulky shelf. <laughs> um, these are rescues basically. Um, and although I've got them out to water them, the chances are they might not need any water. Yeah, see that's still wet. And that's ten days since that was watered. Reason? Pot's too big. But we do have a new growth with some new roots. What it is, I haven't got a clue and it's a way off blooming and if that latest new growth attempts to bloom it will get stopped whatever it is it needs to grow There's another one here in a similar boat I suspect that yeah it's still wet but we've got some new growths uh, a new growth and some new roots so whatever it is it's coming on you know it's it's it is being rescued but it's on the mend you know it's not on the way out <laughs> now this one I desperately need this one to work. This is um, it's an Odonto Blossom and it's Golden Rialto. I really do want this to recover. But I think it is, finally. Um, I suspect this is still wet as well. Yep, that's not getting anything. But it does have a new growth with some reasonable leaves and <clears throat> even some of the older roots are branching on the top of the pot. So it's recovering. It's coming on. Now this thing over here, these bulbs are about a quarter the size they should be. Yeah, it will not grow. It's um, it's a, a Rossio glossum, Rawdon jester. Now we do have some roots going on, including some active tips. But I mean that new growth is pathetic, <laughs> as are the previous two bulbs. But this one suffered with rot, and guess what it's suffering with now? That's a scale outbreak, yeah? Now I've just sprayed that with hydrogen peroxide and I will now get some uh, an alcohol um, cotton wool bud and wipe those off. They're right down in here, yeah, they're around the top of that one. So, as is often the case, they've gone for the weak plant. All four of these plants are very close together. They've gone for that one, that's the weak one. And this one is so close to being given up on, but it's not in my way, and it doesn't create a workload apart from cleaning these flipping scale off. So the four little rescues there. Well, here's one rescue that's about to identify itself. We got a spike. That was lurking in the background. <laughs> I think what happened last time I watered, this is on a, a back shelf and I could see without picking a pot up that it was still wet, so I didn't. So this spike escaped my view. Um, but it will now identify itself. Not a strong plant, it's a rescue, but um, it has produced some roots from its latest uh, growth. I'm getting quite a bit of this, I'm gonna have to look into this. Since I started using the um, uh, cover pots to keep the light off and stop the algae growing. I do get some brown roots but um, there will be a video posted in the not too distant future, it's already been filmed, that's going to identify a serious problem. Hee <laughs> a teaser. <laughs> I'm not going to say what it is um, but that could be a consequence. 
we shall see and um, I'll <clears throat> well I don't know when that video is going to get posted this one will go up today uh, Sunday morning chat tomorrow so it's probably going to be Monday but the clue is I've just bought a new TDS and pH meter for a friend I'll leave it at that. I'm going to tease. <laughs> but this little rescue is about to identify itself. I'm going to have a guess. Just looking at the shape of the spike and the shape of the blooms, I'm going to say that might be Oncidium Sweet Sugar, the dancing lady type. Because there is one lurking in here somewhere, but it's in amongst these sorts of things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that, that, that could be Sweet Sugar, we shall see. That's been flipping ream name now, it's not even an Oncidium anymore, I don't think. But we shall see. Um, I'm going to let it bloom, and then I'll probably take the spike off early, again, get some strength, get another new growth going, get some more roots. So we'll see how that one progresses. But uh, yeah, it's good when rescues progress enough to, you know, at least identify themselves. Oh goody, get a tag in it this time. Okay, I'm going to break off there, and then next time I water my normal pots, which is going to be a while, 10 to 12 days, bearing in mind what's just happened today compared with last time, um, depending on sunshine, um, we'll do the rest starting at the point where I've just left off. So we did all that lot, did all that lot down through there, and I was about to start on here. Um, now, although that sort of looks like halfway, it's not. Um, I mean, you've got two whole shelves there of holy clay pots. Um, there's very little down there, and only a couple on there, and some of those are holy clay pots. And there's a few over there, and then we're on to the small stuff. So there isn't a huge amount left, so I'll start there next time round. And obviously, as a bit of a teaser, we've got a giant to look at. <laughs> And we'll also have some tiny little stuff as well. So uh, I'll leave it at that for today because uh, I suspect this has gone on a while. It usually does when I'm doing individual plants because in my mind I'm only looking at one plant at a time and not adding up the time scales. So uh, I'll see you next time. Some interesting points today, some rescues, some stuff pushing on well, some unknowns, all sorts of things. That, that's, uh, uh, it makes for something a bit different. You never know what's coming next, and nor do I. See you next time.